Hello, Cryptonauts, and welcome back to another episode of Cryptocurrency Chat. I am your host, Jake Chabarelli, and John is... He's out with a friend. You know, it's Sunday. People gotta take a break every now and then. I was out the last, last time, so totally cool with him being out this time. Anyways, it's Sunday, January 22nd, also known as Lunar New Year, or Chinese New Year to those of you. Uh, happy Chinese New Year, everyone. Thanks for listening to our podcast on this day. It is a little early in the afternoon because there's a celebration tonight. If there isn't one on, you're already going on. I've had plenty of people are celebrating all day today. I've been hearing fireworks constantly. But we still got to get to the news. And the news is full of people and lawsuits. But there is some fun stuff, so it's not just lawsuits. Let's get straight into that. This week in crypto Twitter, Sam Bankman Freed pleads innocence via Excel. Twitter reacts with memes as they always do, because the sudden fall of the Chinese exchange called Bitsatlo, uh, Bit, Bitslato, excuse me, also inspired plenty of memes this week, not just that. Thank you, Tim Haki from Decrypt. I'm going to be reading this verbatim. It was the third full week of 2023, the third full week of the consecutive gains for all leading cryptocurrencies, and the third week of ongoing spat between crypto exchange Gemini and its creditor Genesis, Naturally, there was a lot of talk about this on crypto Twitter. On Monday, National Geographic took its first steps, as we mentioned, in the NFT world with the launch of the Genesis Collection GM Daybreak Around the World. Judging by the comments, it was not a terribly smooth minting process. Uh, Yeah, well, here is National Geographic's quick little quote here. Today is the day National Geographic's Genesis Collection Daybreak Around the World will go on sale at 12 p.m., Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern time in the United States. And they give a link, and here's some pictures of that. The following day, Maria Shen, an investor in crypto venture firm Electric Capital, shared key takeaways from the company's fourth annual developer report. Top line takeaway, the blockchain developer space has continued to grow both throughout and despite the bear market, apparently. And uh, here's Maria's multi-tweet um, thread, the multi-thread tweet. Crypto prices briefly dipped on Wednesday in, uh, you can see that, yes, crypto, uh, sorry, on Wednesday in anticipation of the U.S. Department of Justice announcing concerning a major international cryptocurrency action, even Binance CEO, CZ, Xinping Zhao, apparently uh, appears to be spooked, but it ended up being about a little known Chinese exchange called uh, Bitslato. Uh, prompting many memes and such hilarity on Twitter, crypto prices quickly recovered on the reveal. Here we are at Midslato headquarters. <laughs> uh, yeah, and here's another one. Fresh meme yesterday, Bitslato. One lucky solo miner, and we'll talk about this later, with a humble operation won a sizable block reward that day. Uh, $130,000 roughly in fiat, 6.25 Bitcoin, all by himself with only 10 terahash. We'll talk about this later. German automobile titan Porsche, Porsche, pardon me, uh, announced the mint price of its 7,500-piece NFT collection, celebrating its iconic flab- flagship, flagship, flagship sports car, the 911, or the 911. No, it's the 911. The iconic 911, the, not only a number, a legacy, unveiling our mint price of point. 911 ETH. Ha ha. Continuing on with the saga of FTX. On Wednesday, Sam Bankman Freed, the disgraced former CEO, if you didn't already know, of FTX, who is currently under house arrest, charged with eight financial crimes in the connection with the exchange's collapse, insisted that FTX bankruptcy team is wrong about the insolvency of FTX US. Bankman Freed tweeted on uh, his latest Substack post where he says FTX US was and is solvent, likely with hundreds of millions of dollars in excess of customer balances. Although replies were turned off, many quoted SBF's tweet in his, uh, to his meme uh, spreadsheet, rather, or to remind them that he really shouldn't be tweeting anymore. <laughs> SBF, when he makes a spreadsheet, yes, is from Office Space. And here is some of his content. And here we go. These funds, are they in the room with us now? <laughs> and uh, Bloomberg crypto journalist Muyao 
Shen that day tweeted a handy flowchart connecting the key players at the top of FTX's former empire. And here is a tweet with all that information. You click on the link and you can probably see it for yourself. The following day, all the links to the uh, articles that we use are going to be in the description. You guys can check it all out that way. The following day, SBF reacted to a bit of news from his successor, the bankruptcy lawyer John J. Ray III. Ray most notably chaired Enron Creditors Recovery Corps, a company that returned nearly a billion dollars, or $828.9 million, to Enron's creditors after the energy company in 2001 filed for what was back then the largest Chapter 11 bankruptcy in history. Yeah, I remember it was huge. 20 years ago now. And SBF tweets. I'm not going to read it. FTX collapse, uh, collapsed native token FTT also jumped <laughs> at the news of the possible FTX reboot. <laughs> sure, guys, it's, yeah, it's not, it's not going to happen. On Thursday, a crypto-loving lawyer who tweets at MetaLawMan shared a 10-tweet threaded highlighting stark differences in John J. Ray's III's handling of the FTX and Enron bankruptcies. Distinctions. I guess this guy is really into this. Thank you, Mr. Meta Lawman. <laughs> Gemini versus Genesis week three. It's now the third week of a feud that's began at the beginning of the year with news surface the crypto lender Genesis allegedly owes users of Gemini's Earn product about a billion dollars. Gemini Exchange co founder Cameron Winklevoss and digital currency group GCG Barry Silbert, Chief Barry Silbert, who owns who wholly owns Genesis, locked horns over it again last week before the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, got involved and filed a set of charges against both Gemini and Genesis, alleging that Earn was an unlicensed security. It seems this is the common thread. On Wednesday, there were reports that Genesis was preparing to file for bankruptcy. Ouch. Crypto trading company Cumberland, which also operates under the TradeFi trading firm DRW on Friday announced it had no exposure to Genesis. That's a very good thing and here's their tweet. Genesis parent company GCG also made an announcement and here is that tweet regarding bankruptcy. Finally crypto news account Watcher Guru posted a growing list of bankruptcy crypto companies and I will list those because we've already talked about several of them. Watcher Guru says bankrupt crypto companies in 22 and 23 Three Arrows Capital, Celsius Network, Terraform Labs, Voyager Digital, Core Scientific, Babel Finance, Hodlnot, Genesis, BlockFi, Zipmax, and FTX. And with that, we're moving on because John's not here to comment. This week in coins, you guys have probably been following this. There's been quite a bit of an uproar. You can, you can, I mean, you can check it out on CoinGecko right now in the last you know hour or two. It's gone down a little bit. I'm not quite sure why that is. But uh, it has been up quite a bit. I mean, you know, Bitcoin was sitting under 20K for quite a, quite a while there. And then it popped up just a little over, like, 21. And then went up to 23. I think it's down a little bit now. Back to, yeah, 22.5. But it's been making, you know, it's making the rebound. And it's been, it's not been bad. The whole, whole market went over a trillion. So this week in coins, Bitcoin and Ethereum rise. Solana rises the most. Yeah, it went up a lot. The third full week of 2023, also the third consecutive week of market gains for the, all the top cryptocurrencies. Market leaders, Bitcoin and Ethereum, have kept pace with each other to once more bring crypto's total market capitalization, as I said before, to a trillion dollars. Crypto investors may feel like they uh, we've gone back to the heady days of Bitcoin's bull run, though, of course, we're far from the 2021 highs. Yeah, about a third of that still. Actually, I think it was 3.5 trillion, wasn't it? All right, well... We can look easily back at CoinGecko. Bitcoin blew up 16% over the past week and trades at around 23,000. Well, we already know it's 22.5 the time of this writing. According to CoinGecko data, that's still a 64% drop from Bitcoin's all-time high above 69,000 November 10th, 2021, a little over a year ago. Ethereum rose 14% and currently trades at 1650. I think it's slightly less than that, but we talked about that earlier. On Tuesday, the Ethereum network hit 500,000 validators ahead of March's scheduled Shanghai upgrade. Shanghai will allow validators who staked, uh, who each must stake 32 ETH, around $50,000, to begin mining Ethereum using the network's proof of stake consensus mechanism to withdraw their staked ETH and any rewards that have accrued thus far. The 
Two market leaders have briefly dipped on Wednesday in anticipation of a U.S. Department of Justice announcement concerning a major international cryptocurrency action. Even Binance CEO, as we mentioned in the previous article, appeared to be a little bit bothered by this, prompting many memes with hilarity on Twitter. For the third straight week, Sol, Solana, led the market rebound, rising more than any other of the top 20. Sol's up 40% over the last seven days to reclaim a, tw- a value of $25. Of all the leading cryptocurrencies, Solana was worst affected by the FTX meltdown uh, in November last year due to the fact that FTX was one of the earliest and largest financial bankers, bankers backers and endorsers of the cryptocurrency. Solana was trading at nearly 36 when the crisis began, ultimately bottoming out around 10 US dollars. So the recovery comes as a massive relief for those who <laughs> have bought in at 36. Popular meme coin Shiba Inu, or Shib, also had an explosive week, blew up nearly 28%, far outpacing the meme coin in its parodies Dogecoin, and added 7.5% to its total price. Metaverse coins were another big uh, small cap investment this week. It's always weird to say that way. Big small? No, big small. Central Ends Mana led the charge at about 79% to rally to uh, uh, three quarters of a dollar. The Metaverse token rallies generally large this week. The notable rallies include XRP, which blew up 9% to 41 cents. Polygon's Matic rose 11% to a little over a dollar. Tron surged about 10% to uh, just above six cents. And Avalanche climbed a max of 12.8 to 17, roughly 40, 1740, 1739. Discussing the digital euro. Finally, over the in the political world, there weren't many, many further steps to be taken towards regulating crypto anywhere else in the world this week, but some interesting news came out of Brussels. Yes, Brussels, not the Brussels sprout. Bad pun. The European Central Bank is currently investigating a feasibility of releasing a cryptocurrency of its own, a digital euro. The euro group, which compromises, compromises, comprises finance ministers of EU member states employing the euro, regularly meet to discuss this topic. In the latest exchange, they concluded that any currency created by the digital euro project must offer EU citizens privacy and fall in line with other uh, policy objectives such as preventing money laundering, illicit financing, tax evasion, and ensuring sanctions compliance, which means you can't sell it to to Russia. I'm guessing other places too, but Russia is the big one right now. On Tuesday, the European Parliament once delayed voting on the bloc's Landmark Markets in Crypto Assets, or MICA bill, the an unified regulatory framework, if passed, will be applied to crypto across the Union. Voting will happen in April of this year. So, some interesting funny news I kind of want to talk about here was with this, uh, <laughs> this is an a author here, I guess, I'm Ben Munster, someone they brought on, is kind of a comedian. And he's talking about an article called Hot Dow Time Machine. <laughs> I think you may know the reference. A Ukrainian entrepreneur is trying to use a DAO to fund a Thai professor's design for a time machine. <laughs> uh, quite recently, in 2022, a team of scientists from Southeast Asia invented a time machine whose work is based on relativistic electrodynamics and quantum effects. Now, to be clear, there is some time travel factor in quantum effects so it's not entirely unreasonable to think that they might be trying to fund something along that line but that's not really what this seems to be this this dow this uh, hot dow that they're doing here <laughs> um the theory behind it describes in a few page uh, published papers is peer-reviewed journals, which means it's probably realistic, right? This guy knows what he's talking about. But due to the fact that the cost of building the time machine is really kind of unknown, the funding target is configured on Juicebox, where the DAO is registered, uh, is indefinite. <laughs> well, I guess if we go to the future, we can find out how much it was, right? Uh, due to the fact... All right, so... Uh, Polishuk is the guy who's from um, Ukraine who estimates that it could take only about 10 to 11 months to uh, complete the project. That's it's incredibly fast, considering the fact that no one's ever done this in the history of time, other than such a movie as the movie Time Machine. 
but it was a movie, right? Story, a book, anyways. Uh, something like time travel tourism is what they seem to be more interested in or sending people back to live in a different decade that they want, wanted to live in previously. At the same time, since the time machine is invented now, if you wanted to continue to go back and reliving and reliving and reliving, you have to live all the way back up to when this thing was invented again and then go back again. But by then you'd probably be dead, so probably not going to work. Um, yeah, it's an interesting concept, but uh, although, like I said, time travel is effectively possible within uh, quantum effects, Probably not for people. Anyways, moving on. So, uh, trouble in Ethereum. Devs divided over staking withdrawals in the Shanghai upgrade. This is a little troubling to me, but I can kind of see what they're getting at. Like, there's some people who are saying they don't want to... Well, let me just read the subtitle here. Some of the network architects have expressed concern that the upgrade is launching too quickly for fear of public pressure over staking withdrawals. So they're talking primarily about the concept of, well, if we let people pull all the money out, then the, will the project collapse? And that is a, a literal concern that some of the devs are having. But at the same time, they're also saying, well, we don't, it's not so much that we want people to be able to not take their money out. It's just that uh, we don't want it to all go out immediately. So there, some of it was in the Shanghai upgrade was saying that there was going to be a limit as to how much could be taken out per week. So there's that factor. But then there is, by all accounts, this should be launching in March, right? A large contingent of the Ethereum core developers have signaled their willingness to switch ETH withdrawals over to the new encoding method to upgrade following Shanghai, which is being called Cancun. So I think they're just worried about this. I don't. It's kind of unfair that they, you know, said, hey, we'll allow you to do staking, but the time when you get to remove all your coin is unknown. Oh, yeah, it'll be in the future, right? But when in the future? The same problem we had was when was it going to be shifted over to proof of stake? And it took them like almost a year and a half longer than it should have. So it, it's kind of, you know, stake at your own risk. But I think that's always been true. So Ethereum may be one of the largest projects, if not the largest projects that is currently capable of doing staking. Uh, but uh, in fact, it is definitely the largest, most expensive, most valuable, not expensive. Uh, it's just, I don't know, to me it just seems somewhat unfair to continually hold back and not really say, well, no, we don't want it to go until after March. Come on, guys. <laughs> uh, I guess uh, putting your uh, value in internet magic money, right? Moving on. Nexo, I hear Nexo settles with the SEC and will pay $45 million and will kill the crypto lending product. Now, we all know what happened to Celsius. Celsius was doing pretty much the same thing Nexo was. No, Nexo wasn't offering quite as much interest, although depending upon the coin in the United States, you get as much, I think, as 8% or 12% if you were accredited. Um, I will admit to having had used Nexo, but because their, how do I put it, their offerings were always kind of suspect to me, I didn't leave my money in there. I took it all out. And I'm glad I did. Um, I'm not saying that Nexo was bad, but... The, the way that they're putting this, so let me just say this, extending a rough start 2023, crypto lender is settling with regular regulators over its interest products. So they're, um, they're going to cease the offering with the interest program and pay 22.5 million penalty plus an additional 22.5 million to settle with state regulators. So that's where the 45 million comes from. But uh, the, the, I don't know if it's not so much a, This feels like the, the thing that Gary Gensler has been saying all along, that he's been trying to get people doing this sort of thing to stop doing. So, say, if you're offering or selling products that constitute securities under a well-established laws and legal precedent, then no matter what you call the product, those are subject to the laws and are expected to comply with, right? But, and this is the thing that I keep saying, is like, well, is... Is it a security? Are these things actually securities? Do people put money into these things with the expectation of them going up in value? Yeah, they do. So I guess that does technically qualify as a security. Now, does mining? I think that remains to be seen. I don't think it ever will be officially counted as a security. Because, <laughs> I have to say, personally, with my own experience, the number of times that I've lost money putting money into mining is a lot. I'm not saying every single time. I've definitely made money, also wouldn't keep doing it. But um, this is kind of like, you know, the same way a security is treated. And, and Nexo 
did not register and did not follow the rules, and this is the penalty they pay. So no more earned products like Gemini, uh, Genesis uh, or uh, Gemini, Gemini's Genesis Project, I think it was the one that we talked about, the Winklevoss twins were associated with Barry Silbert, and the same thing with Celsius. If you basically have a system where you can put money in expecting a, a return, an increase in return, then it's a security. And that's been pretty well cleared up with pretty much every single example of this so far. So the one thing that I find interesting is that Nexo is commenting on this is it is now unfortunately clear to us, they say, that despite rhetoric to the contrary, the U.S. refuses to provide a path forward for enabling blockchain businesses, and we cannot give our customers confidence that regulators are focused on their best interests. So... Whether that's a cop-out statement or not, I, I can kind of follow that Nexo is not super thrilled. I mean, Nexo is a British company, so I'm sure it, it disappoints them that, that in the U.S. they can't continue doing this. Finally, as was mentioned earlier in This Week in Crypto Twitter, solo Bitcoin miner solves block with a measly rate of or mere 10 terahash. I mean, maybe that sounds like a tera is a lot, right? But really, honestly, uh, I think that's it. the most powerful Bitcoin ant miner is like 140 terahash. This guy was doing a 10 terahash. <laughs> uh, it, he probably spent maybe a couple thousand dollars on his entire setup. Well, beating this extremely unlikely odds, and I believe the odds are actually 1 in 27 million. So this guy basically won the lottery. And we've been mining probably with... Uh, USB miners for you know a number of years. Well, since Bitcoin came out is when whenever the person started. Um, but yeah, <laughs> ten terahash is nothing. It's he, he, it's it's incredibly unlikely. I mean, one thing I would comment at the very end here uh, of the article was that uh, um, yeah, mining pool Bitcoin.com is the largest mining uh, pool currently in the foundry of USA. Because collective ninety exahash. Computing power basically makes up roughly 30% of the entire network total hash rate, which means that they earn a share of the block rewards and fees for one in every three blocks on average. <laughs> and this guy managed to pull it out of his butt. You know, this one to 26 million chance. I, I'm sure other people have done this, so it's incredibly rare, like I said. Um, he did have a slightly higher chance at one point. But it's still one in twenty-three million, one in twenty-seven million. It, it, it's basically winning the lottery. I mean, and, and yes, the lottery in this case is only one hundred thirty thousand dollars at current price, but uh, <laughs> it's still rather impressive to me. And so I'm, I'm grateful to see that somebody did this. I I have had my own luck in my own formats. I'm gonna call it luck. It's, it it really just is preparation plus opportunity. Um, I I was fortunate when it came to the Gala coin in the early days. So. Uh, Everyone has their own story. Hopefully everyone has their own story. Uh, I guess if you're in it long enough, eventually you, hit, you strike gold somewhere. Or maybe it's some other kind of gym. So anyways, thanks all for listening to this relatively short episode here on Sunday Lunar New Year. Uh, the Year of the Rabbit, I believe. Uh, if you guys would like to check out any of our links here for donations, we also accept things in Raven and Ever. Evermore asset aware wallets. If you want to send us assets, we will not turn that down because we can't. <laughs> but uh, thanks all for watching. You can check out our, our website and our um, Discord, or YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, etc., etc. Uh, as we say at the end of every single show, stack sats and hodl. Adios.